Hi there, I'm Johnny Lieberman. And I'm Jethro Bovington from Motor Trends Head to Head Show. We hope you enjoy this free episode. And if you do, click the link below. There are thousands of hours of your favorite Motor Trend shows just to click away. Please enjoy this one. This is the second generation Bentley Continental Super Sports. Is it the best of the bunch? Let's find out. This episode is as much a reminiscence as it is a love letter. 15 years ago, Bentley launched the Continental GT. Before then, the storied British brand made about zero impact on our collective unconscious. Sure, eccentric wealthy dudes could be seen smoking their pipes and arnages and red labels and turbo R's, but they may as well have been driving Bristol's. Rare and who cared? These days, not only has Bentley the brand become a globally recognized symbol of both success and ostentation, but in certain parts of the world, say Orange County, California, Bentleys, and specifically Continentals, are as common as Kias. As for me, I've had some of my most memorable automotive adventures in these big, muscular coupes. The Conte is a car that, simply put, makes me smile. And Bentley just may have saved the best for last. This car is the final iteration of the first generation Continental since Volkswagen Group bought Bentley back in 1999. To understand this car fully, you gotta go back to the zeitgeist of the time, specifically the mind of Ferdinand Pieck. He's the major domo, the supremo of the Volkswagen Group. He acts the guy that decided Audis will be Quattros, and when his Porsche 917 race car was so dominant, it actually shut down the Can-Am series because nothing could compete with it, he said, and I quote, we race because we're not allowed to go to war. Pieck and the Volkswagen Group were going for world domination when this car launched. And when that original Continental GT showed up, I mean, wow, that thing, 551 horsepower, 479 pound feet of torque, zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. It was an impressive piece of kit. What's cool about the Continental is that they kept fiddling with it, right? They didn't leave well enough alone. Yes, you had the GT, then you had the Speed, then in 2009, you had the first Super Sports. I'll tell you a little story. I have this buddy Jay, he's got a very wealthy friend, and this is the type of guy that he buys all the current supercars, and at the end of the year, he dumps them and buys next year's models. But before he does that, he takes some of his buddies on a big road trip from like Colorado to San Francisco. And they had like, you know, the Super Sports, but they also had the Ferrari F430 Scuderia, I believe the Gallardo LP 560-4. Jay's telling me, and I'm like, oh dude, the Super Sports, that's such a good car. And he's like, what? Who cares about a Bentley? It's gonna be lame. I'm like, oh no, 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 dude. Thing is just awesome. Anyways, Jay gets back from the trip, and next time I see him, I go, how, does, how did it go? You know, and he goes, Super Sports, dude. And I say, I know, and he goes, Dude, and I go, I know, and he says, dude, I gotta get one, and I said, I know. Okay, enough with the stories about my overprivileged friends. Let's get back to this Bentley. So what makes the Super Sports different from lesser Continentals? Uh, well, power, obviously, 700 horsepower, 750 pound-feet of torque, I love those numbers. Other differences include uh, different front and rear fascias, and then you have a lot of carbon fiber bits all over the place. Normally on the Super Sports, you'll see this huge wing mounted out back. This car, thankfully, doesn't have that because A, it's actually not big enough, but B, I think it looks better without the wing, and we've got this kind of subtle, nice little pop-up wing, which I think actually looks pretty good. This car is also fitted with an optional $8,000 titanium exhaust system. <laughs> a 
little bit of snap, crackle, and pop to go with your traditional British beef. You asked for it, you got it. The one-stop shop for car lovers. Motor Trend, the ultimate automotive streaming service. It's not about miles per gallon, it's about miles, miles per gallon. Per gallon. <laughs> Get the entire Motor Trend library, including every episode of Roadkill and Roadkill Garage. Dirt every day. <laughs> Head to head. Throttle out and world's greatest drag race. Uh, why do we do it? Because we can. But now, there's a whole new library of car shows available. Watch Bitchin' Rides, catch up on old episodes of Overhauling or American Chopper, and see the latest Diesel Brothers and Wheeler Dealers episodes. You know what? There's even live racing and auctions. If you love automotive, there's only one place to stream. Start your free trial today and get Motor Trend on any of your favorite devices. A funny thing happened at the test track. We weighed the Super Sports. 5,175 pounds. That's 182 pounds more than the first generation. Not a ton, but not insignificant either. That's what happens when you leave the rear seats in. But surely any extra weight is more than taken care of by all the extra power and fury, right? And no, the opposite of right. The 4,993 pound first generation Super Sports hit 60 miles per hour in 3.6 seconds. The new one? 3.5 seconds, just one tenth better. Quarter mile on the last one, 12.1 at 113.8 miles per hour. The new one, also 12.1 seconds, but 113.7 miles per hour. That's slower. Figure eight, tied. Both took 25 seconds flat, but braking? 103 feet from 60 miles an hour in the old car versus 115 feet in the new one. Oh my. Why isn't the new Super Sports quicker? I don't know, especially considering it has a better power to weight ratio than the old one. 7.4 pounds per horsepower for the new compared to eight pounds per pony for the first one. What does all that extra horsepower do then? Other than feeling and sounding fantastic? I'm not sure. Look, 3.5 seconds to 60 miles an hour is nothing to sneeze at, especially for a car that's closer to three tons than not but this Super Sports makes way more power and torque than the car it replaces. It should be quicker than it is. Numbers aside, I love how she drives. I guess it's the weight, it has to be, because driving a powerful Bentley is such a unique experience. There's a feel to it, a vigor, a fight amongst all the forces. Heavy and massive to be sure, but never sloppy. The opposite of a pickup truck. No, 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 it's not a sports car. The Super Sports is something else. A locomotive, an undammed river, an element, gravitational pull. I, I can't quite pinpoint it. Whatever it is, I love the feeling. The single best word, indomitable. Not that you would ever take your $328,000 Bentley Super Sports to a racetrack, but if you did and you were friends with a professional race car driver like we are, here's what it might look like. The engine's just a marvel of modern engineering. Let's go and see what these things can do. Let's go find out. What is it like to have 700 horses under your right foot? Every car is a potential record breaker. Ignition, every episode now streaming on the Motor Trend app. Start your free trial today and get Motor Trend on any of your favorite devices. Dive. It 
does have the power. Brakes have a lot of power. I don't think they like being pushed too hard. The all-wheel drive is great with 720 pound-feet of torque. Wow. Surprisingly, it's getting me the gear I want. I'm very impressed with the training program. I like the traction. A lot of vertical motion because of that comfort orientation. <laughs> Whoa! Come on, baby! <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be laughing, but it's kind of fun. She's a big girl, but she can dance. Get it! Can a car be two things at once? Is the Super Sports a great car in its own right and the proper exclamation point at the end of the original Phaeton-based Bentley Continental sentence? Because the Super Sports is good, extravagantly, decadently, sinfully good. To get back to the original question, this grand machine, the second generation Super Sports, isn't actually the best Continental I've ever driven. No, the last one was a better driver's car, as was the GT3R. However, as the Hellcat has shown us, 700 horsepower is 700 horsepower. Like Joseph Stalin said, sometimes quantity has a quality all its own. In this case, the Super Sports might in fact be the most Bentley, Bentley of them all. Well, it and the Mulsanne Speed. And the Brooklyn's, of course. Oh, and all that pre-war stuff like old blood and guts and the blue train car. I'm rambling. Anyhow, I'm chomping at the bit to drive the new Continental, the one based on the much lighter Porsche Panamera. But until then, I'll go ahead and declare this massive machine an absolutely proper send-off to a car that saved a brand. Is that your phone? I hate your phone. I know I hate it. Yeah. This is this is on him. This is this is the director. <laughs> All right. Uh